On today's show, I talk with David Burroughs about the yin and yang of passion and discipline for entrepreneurs and how he stays focused most of the time. I'm Julie B, and they don't teach this in business school. Hey there, I'm Julie B, and you're listening to They Don't Teach This in Business School, a podcast where we discuss business ownership lessons that are learned through experience, not in a classroom. Today's episode is special because I get to interview David Burroughs, the founder of Hive Essence and Arc Earth. I know we're going to have a really great conversation, and we're going to learn some really great things about business ownership. So David, welcome to the show. I'm really glad to have you here today. Thank you. Great to be here. David, why don't you just give us an overview as we open up here in terms of what your companies do and also what your role is in in running them? Sure. Well, uh, I've got 20 years experience in startups and innovation and technology and consumer products. And uh, right now, after COVID, I got laid off and I thought, what do I really want to do? I had gone back and forth between corporations and startups and and I thought, well, I, I was kind of at that point in my life where I really wanted to do something meaningful and impactful. And um, we were involved in helping save bees at the time, my wife and I. And um, we thought, well, I want to find a way to contribute and and not only save bees, but pollinators like butterflies and bats and hummingbirds and um, everything that's that's good for our food supply. And so my wife and I came up with the idea to do a skincare company. So we call it high vessel to play on uh, bees being the essence of life and the hive concept. Mm-hmm. And it's sustainable, organic, honey infused, self-care, skin care. So, and then that benefits our nonprofit, which is called Arc Earth. Arc Earth is a, uh, what I call a pollination accelerator. And we go into urban farms, community gardens, uh, even corporate headquarters like Fairmont Hotel, uh, where we can deploy beehives and let them, um, the employees help manage that. It becomes a, a community project, a staff project. And then we also put in wildflowers for beauty and gives the bees food. And we even do butterfly enclosures and bat houses. So this not only creates a great environmental um, addition to those areas, but it also unifies people to volunteer and do some fun things. We can also increase food and crop supplies uh, or yields in areas like urban farms and community gardens. So it's kind of a win-win all the way around. And to be honest, it's the most fun I've had in a long time. <laughs> and that's, it's it's really important to start a business and something I think that you, you will enjoy. I, I often, what I'm really interested in um, right now, and when people say they're they're following a passion, how they make sure that, you know, if you're you're following your passion into a business, Mm -hmm. I always recommend you you keep a little bit of it for yourself because, you you know, you don't want to lose your passion because you get burned out in business. And I'm I'm wondering if you had any thoughts on, on that, on, on making sure that, you know, you can maintain that passion through through the business, even through the hard times. Yeah. And that's for anybody that's working for someone or working for themselves. Um, and especially, I mean, these are two startups. <laughs> so one startup's hard enough, but they complement each other. And I'm passionate about both. But of course, you hit burnout and mm-hmm. things become a challenge. And that's really where you have to have discipline. So there's, for me, I've had to develop this yin yang, if you will, of, of passion and discipline. And um, when you have passion, you're driven. It's like having a whole cup of coffee or you're excited. You're like a little kid. And Mm -hmm. then when you don't feel like it, you've got to go back to your task list and go, okay, I'm going to get my by doing these five things that I know need to get done. And they're always bigger and scarier when you don't have passion because now it feels like you're being pulled instead of pushing. Mm -hmm. Um, So the best thing to do is just work through those tasks, um, take the hard ones first. So you feel this accomplishment and you get some serotonin, dopamine going and, then take a nap if you need to take a rest, take a walk, um, listen to music. I make playlists all the time that I can go to. Um, and I time them out by amount of songs and I put a headset on and I just disappear into some thoughts and meditation Mm -hmm. and I can usually get it back pretty good. Um, 
so yeah, it's just about balancing things out, but it's a combination of passion and, and um, having discipline. And it sounds like you have experienced burnout um, either I, I, in the business or maybe even before that. Do you have any, um, do you have any burnout stories you'd be willing to share with the listeners? <laughs> I do. Um, and, and they usually happen when you're in a, towards the end of the skyrocket part of a startup. Mm -hmm. So you've gone from like three people and everybody's so excited. It's like being at Disneyland and then you hire people and you, and you close deals on uh, building leases and you get partnerships and customers and then burnout sneaks up on you and it, you have to watch for it because it can mask itself in, in different ways, like uh, anger outbursts, uh, forgetting things, depression. So, you know, look for the early signs of, of burnout because it's your subconscious telling you, Hey, we need to, we need to do a timeout and, and rest a little bit. But I was, um, I was working on a startup where I had taken and we'd raised close to 88 million. And I had been both the HR department and the operations guy, the marketer guy, all this stuff. And it was during a thunderstorm and we're in the boardroom and um, and you know, and time takes on a whole new meaning, right? So it's not four in the afternoon. I think it was like nine thirty at night, and we were working on trying to solve some problems, and the electricity went out, and um, so the whole boardroom is just dark, and the only thing that's lit up are our laptops, <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, he yells at me to go get a flashlight, so we I can shine on the whiteboard so he can keep working and remaining. Mm -hmm. And I remember running down the hall with my phone and my flashlight and I was so tired and exhausted. I almost started crying. I thought, okay, I can't, I can't do that. <laughs> so I had to pull myself together, find a flashlight, come back. And then we just kind of battered through the storm of not only the storm itself, but the, the meeting as well. And that's when I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I can come back here in the morning. Um, so I, I didn't, I, I called in sick and, um, and so I took a sick day, but I still got calls all day long. It was crazy. That's such an interesting, there's a really interesting theme that I think is emerging in that story because one question, you know, we often think about burnout coming after really bad things that happen, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. burnout came for, for you when you had, when you were achieving all of these levels of success, raising 88 you know, million dollars for a startup is no small right. feat, um, no matter how you get that done. And, you know, most, most people who go down that path would say, what a success. And you are so burned out. And that's, I, just, I just think that's an interesting, and then the, the, the metaphor of the storm going on in both <laughs> places. Um, it's amazing how those yeah. things can show up. Yeah. It, burnout isn't, you're right. People tend to associate it with negativity something bad having layoffs and having to work extra time but burnout is really just a point where your your you yourself physically and your brain kind of hit, hit the empty tank right and you need to recharge and rethink and recalibrate and that could come in good or bad times too so it's always to be good to be on the lookout for signs that you're approaching that so you don't hit that wall um because that's bad for your health um it's bad for your your team and your family and everybody around you. So you got to take care of yourself. Hey, this is Julie B. And you're listening to They Don't Teach This in Business School. I'm here today with David Burroughs. And we were just talking about how, where burnout can come from. And I'm, I could talk about that all day long. But I do want to ask you a, a question, switching gears here, David. Um, what is your favorite part about being a business owner? I, you know, it's several things. Um, a lot of people think, oh, I'm going to be a, a own my own business so I could be my own boss. I won't have any bosses. <laughs> and which is completely wrong because uh you've got clients, you've got customers, you have you'll have employees. Um, and all of those are people you answer to. So what it comes down to, my favorite part is being able to script the day and come up with a game plan, not only for that day, but for the week and accomplishing the whole goal of what we've created. For the company to be and want it to manifest and serve uh, customers in the community and being able to make something out of scratch 
I mean, we made this out of thin air, literally, it was just ideas. Mm-hmm. And and then now we just got chosen one of the top 50 in Dallas, humbling and exciting. And, and just having the ability to guide that ship, if you will, and, and, and chart new things. It's really fulfilling when you see a vision come to fruition. I think that's mm-hmm. probably one of the I'm actually getting to experience that in, in about an hour from now I'm launching a new another a, a web series called the game of leadership and I'm interviewing athletes turned entrepreneurs and mm-hmm. uh, I'm really excited about who we've got lined up for that but it, when that idea came up my team was like when are you going to do this why are you doing this and I just felt I felt very strongly there was there are stories like that that need to be told too much like the stories that get told on this on this podcast i feel like there's there's some ties there that i'm interested in as well and it's just cool when you when you your vision starts to come to fruition and you can you're making something that was just a dream you know six months ago or a year ago so that's that's yeah that's a great part about being a business owner yeah Yeah. it's very rewarding and um and the cool thing is it's like you've always wanted to say i want to email HR or my boss or somebody about this idea. And then it either gets nixed or there's a committee that reviews it. And then your idea doesn't get to happen or someone else takes it. Well, being a business owner, you get to take your idea directly to uh, manifestation. And if it fails, it fails. If it, if it wins, you succeed. And you got to take both the failures and the successes um, because they all stack up to building a company. Yeah. And you 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 use the word script, and you I you can share as much about your background as you want to, or as little here. But suffice it to say, you have a background in scripting, uh, some elements for shows and things that that we've all seen. And how how have you found out your work skills when you had you know quote unquote corporate job have translated mm-hmm. into your skills as a business owner, entrepreneur? Um, That's a good question. I think um, within a company, you get to, um, you've got guardrails. So your management gives you tasks to do and things to do. And then you get, but you have guardrails, right? Because you've got your department that you're in. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of times you don't know what the other departments are doing or what their challenges are. So, in a way, you need to learn from each of those little tasks, even if it seems menial, because uh, those are decisions you make and you learn from. And it's kind of a sometimes it's binary. Is it this or that? Or sometimes you don't sometimes it's very esoteric. You don't know what mm-hmm. the choices are. But as you build on those choices, then you get to learn the dynamics of decision making and the um, um the the kids call it F A F O. Um, yeah. I, I can't say that out loud, but <laughs> it's yeah. the consequences, uh, good and bad, of mm-hmm. what you decide to do and how it affects those around you. And so I I've just kind of stacked all of this because I've gotten to play a role primarily in marketing and PR, but also business development, fundraising, operations, and HR. So I I finally had all those abilities to become a C level. Um, and and run something and feel confident about it. So being confident um, and having gratitude are two of the things that are very important really with anything in life. <clears throat> and those are also, I, I would say there's a little bit of a yin and a yang to those as well, because if you have too much right. confidence, you've got too big of an ego and you're probably not, you don't have enough gratitude. And then I feel like, yeah, you mentioned, you said yin and yang a little earlier in this interview and, there is a uh, dynamic to those two terms as well that I think as business owners, you have, you, you, you absolutely have to have confidence, um, Mm -hmm. but you can't go too far with that. And I think the way you balance that out is always remaining grateful and, and, and keeping gratitude for, you know, whatever it is you might be grateful for just making that a point to remember those, those, those elements in your life as well. Indeed. It's very important. So, David, tell me about uh, you mentioned success and failure uh, earlier, too. What what has been your biggest win or your proudest moment thus far as a business owner? Um, Good question. I think it's been really I think it's it's 
is what's happened in the last two and a half years with our startups, High Essence and Arc Earth, because um, it's taken my other startups, we didn't pivot fast enough or uh, they became too big and too many people and it lost direction. And so, mm-hmm. you know, those are, some of those are failed or some of those got sold off and it's a mixed bag, if you will. Um, but this time around, it's really growing fast and I've even been taking it kind of conservative, but I know all the check boxes and, and uh, benchmarks to hit with it and what's and where to pivot and when to pivot, or at least I think I do, mm-hmm. but I, I'm better situated for that now. So I have to say I'm really proud about, about what we're doing because I really, earth would be like a side, small foundation and it's taken on a life of its own. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've been to uh, Collision in Toronto with it. Um, we got cited with the uh, UN for as being SDG, the Sustainable Development Goal Startup. Um, and we're listed now with the WEF, World Economic Forum, on their site uh, under a circular economy concept. So I, I've just been so proud of, of how it's taken off and grown. And a lot of that just comes from being passionate and not giving up. Uh, you got to be perseverance. You have to have perseverance and be persistent and you have to have it every day even in small ways because you know if anybody that has the app on their phone where they have to walk six thousand steps a day or something um, you know that uh, all those flights you have to walk all of those steps you have to take to stay in 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 your healthy loop Mm -hmm. um, those are one at a time but they add up and you do it continuously then you get healthier, you feel better. That's the same thing about a company is that everything you do has to be individual steps that get you to the big, big picture. Hey, you're listening to They Don't Teach This in Business School. I'm the host, Julie B, and I'm here with David Burroughs, and we're just having a great conversation. David, you mentioned making sure you're taking the steps, and you've also mentioned discipline uh, earlier in this podcast. And I'm just curious, how do you make sure, because we as business owners, a generalized statement is we one like to chase shiny objects or go down rabbit holes. Um, and two, there always seems to be a fire to put out. So how do you make sure that you do stay disciplined um, and that you do work on those really high impact activities that you have to work on every day to, you know, maintain momentum as you're growing? Uh, that's a great question because I, uh, I, get distracted by shiny objects and um and i have three phones so talk about shiny objects Uh, (laughs) and then yeah stuff is on fire sometimes it's because you get distracted by the shiny objects and (laughs) and let something go haywire but um so i'm really blessed because my wife and i make great business partners because she is um i used to joke because um if we were microsoft office i'm powerpoint and she's excel she's very logical She's Capricorn. If people are into that, I'm mm-hmm. I'm a Pisces Aries, just an hour and a half away from being a Pisces, and so uh, my head's in the clouds all the time, and mm-hmm. I'm thinking of ideas. And she's the one that like reigns, pulls me back, and go, "Well, have you finished this yet, or have you done this?" And so she makes me do a task list on Sunday night for the for the week, uh, and then I have to break the task list down into the days of the week. Mm-hmm. Um, it's almost like my mom did when I yeah. was a kid because <laughs> um, I'm dyslexic a, and then I mm-hmm. have ADHD, mm-hmm. uh, I'm left-handed. I mean, all the characteristics, right. And, mm-hmm. but the great thing is, you know, I can be creative and come up with concepts, but then in the past, I've really struggled to, um, see them through. Mm-hmm. And so once we partner, and this is the first time we've partnered on a business together, uh, she's really helped me be the disciplinary uh, aspect that I need. Mm-hmm. But, you know, at some point you have to learn to do it yourself if you're a business owner. So I think being very simple and don't make a list of things to do. Anybody can make a list. Then you just push them over. You scratch out Monday and write Tuesday. <laughs> what you have to do is take the list items and stick them on your calendar. Like mm-hmm. put, um, prioritize them, figure out how much time they're going to take, and then just start populating your calendar because you're going to get notifications. You're going to get um, pop-ups on your computer to remind you. 
And so when my wife's not around to remind me, I have, uh, I have Siri. <laughs> there you go. So David, one question I love to ask business owners is about the legacy that they hope to leave. So what, what kind of legacy do you hope to leave, leave behind? Um, well, this is big picture thinking, but, yeah. um, we, uh, we really intended to, it was the phrase go big or go home. And we've, um, we've gone past the first phase of our business model with both entities mm -hmm. and, and they seem to be balancing out pretty well and people are receptive to them. Uh, and when we first got our big contract with Fairmont hotels, I was like, wow. And now we've got a, a Fairmont, uh, a contract coming up with the uh, fair park Dallas, which is a 300 acre park here in Dallas. It's um, over a hundred year old um, uh, uh, fair fairgrounds, kind of like, um, I don't know what you compare it to, but it's huge. And the yeah. world's fair was here at one time. Yeah. So all of these things are coming together so quickly. And, you know, I just want to leave something. I hope that our earth foundation becomes something that lives on past us and can continue to help build uh, different communities. You know, ultimately we want to help eradicate food deserts in underserved communities. So these urban farms and community gardens that we're being able to help increase food supply and bring wildflower seeds and heirloom seeds for yeah. vegetables and fruits, those are going to help those communities. And they already are. Mm -hmm. And, but that's something that is a pivot point for uh, food supply and people's health. And, you know, for me, it excites me because it, it means that that's going to live beyond, um, my lifetime here on earth. And so that gives me a lot of hope and energy um, when I need it. <laughs> mm. That's so, and, and eradicating food deserts is such a worthy, noble and needed pursuit. And, and we could, we could do a whole podcast about, we could do multiple podcasts about right. uh, what you're involved in, but just, yeah, I, I, that is amazing for sure that that is your your, your hope and your goal there. So as we're wrapping up, David, what I, I always like to ask business owners, um, if you had taken a class before, be before becoming a business owner, if you had taken a class about business ownership, what's one thing that you wish you would have learned or you wish you could have learned before starting your own companies? Uh, well, that's so much. There's a whole kit <laughs> of things. Take the top two but, things. Um, yeah. I, you know, I think what we, and I've seen this, I was on the board of Baylor uh, Arts and College, Arts and Sciences, and we worked really hard to kind of cross-pollinate between the different colleges. So you've got the College of Divinity, the, you know, the English department, the, the med school students and, and finding ways to kind of broaden that. And, and we did it with some ideas like film projects and things where each department could, to, could add to it. And while I was there, we were actually able to create a film department uh, for the first time at Baylor. But um, I'm thinking for a class, even in high school, if um, it could be based around not purely entrepreneurship, but about, um, about responsible management and creating change um it, because not everybody can be a business owner and, mm -hmm. but some people love being in a, in a management team and a system but they can still make a difference and i think that's that's the the thing that we should be teaching people is what they're helping find their talents mm -hmm. and then maximizing those talents because like i need discipline and someone to put together spreadsheets i our business would fail if I didn't have that. So mm -hmm. there's always something to balance it out. You can't be everything. Um, so I think learning your weaknesses and accepting those yeah. <laughs> and exploiting your talents and, and then learning how to work with people and mm -hmm. not control people or mm -hmm. manage people, but team up and work as a team. Um, so you've got a unified effort on things. That's a weird answer to your question, isn't it? No, it's, 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 it's very, I, I, one of the things I think business owners need to understand is that from the start, they're a leader, whether they're a solo pro nor or, or what, I mean, it, if you start with a team or if you start by yourself working in your home office, 
whoever you're serving is going or or customers clients whatever you're doing they are going to look at you for leadership and so i think one of the things that themes that um i talk about a lot is self leadership and the first place you start with self leadership is an awareness about who you are so to your mm-hmm. point you know having an awareness and an acceptance of your weaknesses and then also knowing and exploiting the things that you're really, really good at and making sure you surround your people, surround yourself with people who balance you out as well um, is, exactly. is what I heard in that answer. Mm-hmm. That's exactly it. Thank you for some summarizing. <laughs> I try. That's what I do. <laughs> I learned that that's one thing I do really well as I listen and I listen and then I can summarize things into a sentence or two. <laughs> so. That was perfect. I, I should have written that down. I'm just like, well, it's recorded. So that's the good thing. Oh, there we, go. we have, we have, yeah. we have it on recording. So no worries. <laughs> um, well, David, listen, I've so enjoyed having this conversation with you today. And you I know well. the entrepreneurs and business owners who will listen and watch this will as well. I just, I want to thank you so much for being on the show with me. Thanks. It was a pleasure. And that is it for this episode, but stay tuned because I'll be back soon with more lessons learned on the business owner's journey. I'm Julie B, and they don't teach this in business school.